Hi everyone, I'm Michelle and welcome back to my meadow. It's the first weekend in June, so that means I'm here to give you a garden tour of what's growing on here in our Zone 9A Northeast Florida Garden. But if you're here to grab some shots of some Instagram worthy type gardens, this may not be the place for you. I am absolutely an imperfect gardener and if anything this past month absolutely proves it. If you can deal with my garden the way that you probably deal with family when they show up, you're family now. I didn't tidy up for you. I didn't go out of my way to make things extra nice. I did a few things that needed to be done, but other than that, you're going to see the garden today raw and real and the way that I've been sort of dealing with it this year. So if you're into that, stick around and let's go take a garden tour. Hi everyone, I'm Michelle and welcome back to my meadow. I'm gardening in zone 9A in Northeast Florida. I'm not an expert gardener, but I love showing you the good, the bad, and the ugly and embracing the imperfection that learning to garden has to offer. Well, maybe the very first place to start is over here at Audrey the Lufa Squash Trellis. Thank you, Kaylee, for this name. I love it. I call her Audrey every time I come out. I installed this cattle panel trellis over the top of this bed in March. It's now June, so it's been almost 90 days. I didn't plant it out right away, but mom gave me some loofah, so I planted loofah on this end. I picked up some tomato and pepper starts, and so I put the peppers in the back. The tomatoes here, I've recently added some of the marigolds. And I have some other things popping up here. Let me get in a little closer. Last winter, I put some ginger in this bed and I forgot all about it. And so it is showing up now and saying, hey, I'm here. Don't forget about me. Then over here, I threw some taro bulbs in here, not realizing they probably need a lot more space than I have given them. So I may be digging those up eventually and transplanting them. But for now, we've got a little bit of taro and the loofah is just off the chain. We've been eating loofah a few times a week. Now I'm leaving a few of these on to grow. It's kind of hard to tell, but let me see if I can get my arm up here to show you how long this is. Hopefully that's on the video. We're letting some of the loofah grow longer so that I can do some taste testing. I want to see how big I can let it grow before it stops being tasty and moves into the more fibrous stage. And then down in the middle, we have our sub pod. I don't normally show the sub pod on a tour, but I will open it up real quick here and show you what's going on inside. After all, the sub pod is the reason I put this trellis on top of this bed to help create some more shade. So I have been feeding these about every two to three days now. Look in there. Look at all that loveliness. They are going to town. I think I fed this night before last maybe and they are just doing such a great job if you don't know what this is this is a sub pod um, there are probably cheaper ways to do this eventually i will test some more ways and test some more things but i cover up each of the sides to help keep the moisture in and i can feel it's even pretty warm today so early in the morning it's warm it tells me i've got some activity happening and eventually i'll be able to dig this out put it through a sifter and I'll take that black gold and use it all around the garden and of course thank all these beautiful creatures for their work. This has worked out much better this year. Last year I did not take the patience route and burned up a lot of the worms so I restarted in the winter when it was cooler and started building it up and Again, I am probably putting a quart of food every few days in here. I just have a Cool Whip container we keep in the fridge and we come and dump it out. And then I have this extra bit of shade to give some more covering. And I use like this felt and this box over here just to create additional shade and keep it cooler. And it must be all right because I noticed my plants were all leaning over back there. And I found out yesterday, this is Babyface's hiding spot. Babyface is one of our meadow cats. And so she's been laying back here, and you can see all my plants are leaning over. Thanks, baby face. Now, when I did this, some people con were concerned about the peppers not getting enough sun, and I think you're right. At first, I thought it was going to be fine, but our production is really, really low on the peppers. But 
it is what it is. I do suspect at some point the loofah is going to die back. We'll get a little more sun in here and then maybe as we go into winter we'll be able to get more peppers out of all of this. But let me just come around this side. It's just a beauty to behold. And here's something fun that's happening. My neighbor told me they can see this over their fence, which of course you can see how they would. And she loves looking at it. So I told them and I made a deal. I said, anything that comes over, do you want me to pull it off? Or shall we just let it grow down the fence line and you gather whatever's on your side? And they seem pretty happy about that idea. So there's actually loofah growing on the fence now. I'm going to pop those over to the other side so the neighbor can harvest loofah whenever they want to. While I'm over here, I should show you all the yams have come back nicely from the freeze. I do have a taste test video coming up soon. I had some pulled, they've cured now, so I'm gonna do a taste test of the yams versus the sweet potatoes, and we'll see what those are like. These are just 100 gallon grow bags. I have to say, I really like having my sweet potatoes in a raised bag and in a controlled environment. So I may do more of these like this for sweet potatoes and yams in the future, where they're very controlled, they're not growing into places I don't want them. I've even thought about maybe trying to figure out how to do in the same bed a succession planting to where maybe now I harvest half of each of these and plant out uh, more of the vines, but we'll see. Pomegranate tree, which is underloved over here, needs to be taken care of. We've got taro and ginger. We've got banana plants, not banana trees, banana plants and some that need to be cut out that I trimmed back that didn't grow anymore. I want to talk about this banana leaf mulch. Y'all probably saw that video. And if I can figure out how to do it, I'll put a link to a card. I used a leaf chipper to make this banana leaf mulch and it was terrible. It took forever. It was not fun. The, the, the leaf chipper was not made to do banana leaves. And I have to say though, they are a great weed suppressant. The only places I'm getting weeds are just right at the edges. Everything else is not getting weeds in there unless it's right up against a plant, like you can see something right down in there. I mean, I keep having mixed feelings about it, but I might do that again now. I might figure that out again and do it again or pay the nephew to do it on a day that's not so hot if I can get him to get out here and work a little bit more for me. He did a great job. I'll show you something he helped me with this week too. A little more of the reality of having an imperfect garden. I trimmed back lemongrass. Now I'm letting the things that trimmed brown and I'm using some of those browns in the compost and in the worm bin just so that I can have more browns mixed in with all the green that's coming out of the kitchen. This avocado is recovered from the compost pile. Last year it froze back and now we've got a brand new plant coming out of it. We've got blackberries. We were able to eat a few of those before the birds got them and some other blackberries there, but that has not been fruitful at all. So here we have the Cattley guava and we're beginning to see it put on more life. It froze back pretty hard, but I actually see, hold on. Buds, hooray, we have buds, we have lots of buds, hooray. I wrapped this Birdie's Urban Bed around the plants that were already in grow bags and I'm really happy with how it turned out. It looks better than the grow bags over here and I know that these had some really long roots embedded in the ground so it helped me help them have a better transplant without being transplanted. This is the jungle. So I had a bunch of tomato starts that I up potted and was gonna get put out into the raised garden beds, but that hasn't happened so far this year. So I just come in here and look for red and pick them. And there's a couple of these smaller tomatoes. They rarely make it back into the house. Oh wait, here's one. They rarely make it back into the house because I like to have garden snacks. Mm. Man, y'all, you should grow tomatoes just so you can walk around and have snacks in the yard. Excuse me for talking with my mouth full. My free fertilizer is working out really, really well. In those barrels, I stuffed weeds 
that we gathered in the garden and we cleaned up and then we covered it with water and they've been sitting there since last summer and at the first of the month I will do which is not this weekend I'll do another feeding around the garden and I'm currently doing a 20 to 1 ratio because it's been sitting so long it's a lot more potent and someone on Instagram suggested a 20 to 1 ratio so one part of the fertilizer and 20 parts water roughly it doesn't have to be perfect it's all natural it's just weeds there's comfrey there's weeds there's dandelion there's uh, wild lettuce all these things that grow around the yard old plants and uh, I can tell you that when I after I fertilized last month the dragon fruit started crazy popping now it could be time for the dragon fruit to crazy pop but it really crazy popped more than the year before another tomato bed over here this y'all i am super excited about this has taken so much longer than it was supposed to back in april that sounds so long ago it really was um, the family convinced me it was time for me to look at having a garden studio to work out of to make these videos to store all the tools that we're using to make the videos and so it's going to go right here and we got a bunch of the stuff moved out of the way i've just got this table left but stay tuned Rumor has it that this is going to be delivery week this week, so I'll take a couple of days off from work and hopefully by the next time you see a garden tour, there will be a garden studio here. Now, speaking of roots, I talked about not moving that other, other plant. I want to show you this sticking up out of the ground. I felt terrible, but it had to be done. Do you see all those roots there? Those are from my mulberry tree. It had to be moved. It had been sitting here and it had roots growing out of the bottom of the bucket huge roots and now i don't know where this is going to end up so i've just left it here on the ground and covered it up with a bag of soil to try to just protect the roots as best i could and i've watered it in really good and i've watered the ground in really good it doesn't look too worse for the wear but it did not like getting moved like that for sure Yes, two days ago, it was really, really, really looking sad. And I just let the water run on it for a really long time to try to cheer it back up. If this is your first tour with us, this back here is Orchard Road. This is technically the back of my property. Uh, everything past this um, is not on my official land, but no one's using it because there's a creek over there. So I have a little bit of storage over there. I don't put any of my plants and stuff or plant anything over there that couldn't get chopped down. So Orchard Row is here. Tomorrow on my live, because tomorrow is the monthly going live, I'll tell you uh, what happened to my plans for Orchard Row. I had some big ideas, some things I was going to get going, and uh, just for some personal reasons, they can't materialize probably this year. So I'll tell you all about that tomorrow on the live. And if you're watching this after the live was over, you can certainly go back to the channel and find the June monthly live. So on Orchard Row, we have a lot of citrus going on. Of course, we have the mulberry, some more cattle guava with fruit on. Hooray! Fruit, fruit, fruit. Look at there. I really like how the cattle guava tastes. I hope to do more with it. We ended up not having any of the varieties that my wife liked, and so we're going to work on that as well. Funny story about this, and I've told this a couple of times, but this is back here under this canopy, close to the trees. In fact, underneath a tree, if I go and get right under the plant, I mean, it is covered by a tree. And so it only gets noon and afternoon and late day sun. It does not get the morning sun. Which also means that at the evening, this all gets warmed up. And during our hard winters, this plant never froze back. We have cattle guava in three different places in our yard. Everybody froze except this one. And I truly believe it is the microclimate that is happening right here in the back. Now, if you're here and you're looking at the meadow and you're thinking that all needs to be mowed, well, eventually, but a few times a year, I try to let this really grow up and grow wild all the Biden's Alba is great for the pollinators. I let a lot of native things just kind of come back in. Whatever, grow, whatever grows gets mowed probably towards the end of the summer or for as long as my wife will allow me to have it growing up really tall. She's been taking a lot of trips out to the creek now, so I may be out of luck on keeping it too big. When we moved here four years ago, there was, this was just hard packed 
terrible grass. Nothing would grow here. I couldn't even get um, the shovel in the ground. And so we've topped it with mulch once and we've just let it go and grow crazy. And it seems to be improving the soil and improving places for the critters to run and hide and enjoy all kind of critters, all kind of life out here in the meadow. A bunch of native plants that have been sitting there for almost a year that are in pots that probably would really love to have an own special home. At this point, I'm sure they've grown into the ground. I may have to just turn this into a garden and cut the pots away and just let it be. This is our blueberry. Actually, we have two blueberries here. One of them has fruit. The cardinals have taken most of the fruit because I forgot to cover it, but I got out here and covered it this week. And it looks like I might actually have some to harvest, maybe tomorrow or the next day. This is just a tool fabric. I see it fell over, so I've got a hole in here. So this really isn't keeping, this really isn't keeping the birds out right this minute. But I wanted something that they wouldn't get trapped in. I didn't want to have the netting where they could get trapped. I had one get trapped last year on one of the other garden beds and couldn't get out. And so I didn't want to have that happen this year. So I'm testing the tool. Something new that I don't think I've had on a garden tour before are some pawpaw. Um, I did have them in the perennial count, but now they've been potted up and we are got them here. And we have sort of this, this fabric in front of them to help stave off some of that afternoon sun because the pawpaws are an understory plant. If you don't, aren't familiar with understory, take a look at some permaculture studies. Understory are the trees that grow underneath the canopy of other trees. So particularly when they're young, they can't take all the heat. Big shout out to the Millennial Gardener and his channel for the information on that. I don't think I have released the video yet on the pawpaws, but I do have one somewhere on the cutting room floor, as they say. I'm happy to see blooms. Oh, oh, oh. We've got blooms on the lime and I saw the tangerine plant tangerine tree had stuff and this Myers lemon is looking great as well this area of the garden uh, was a pollinator garden until it was accidentally cut down so now we are trying to grow that back and I put this rug out there to try to fight off the weeds while that was happening and in doing so some ducks that had been passing through started eating the bird seed that fell from the bird feeder. And so I, of course, want to take advantage of the fact that ducks come through my yard almost every day. So I added a swimming pool. I actually will have a full video out about that, but this is just a little kiddie pool. I did a short on it. We've had the ducks in it a few times. Mostly the raccoons love it. And so I have to clean it every couple of days, which I need to do again today, but I have an upgrade for it and I'll make sure I make a video about that. Then I added in some Coreopsis. Let me see if I can get closer here. I'm pretty stoked about those. I grew some Coreopsis from seeds. I left them in the trays way too long. They got really leggy, but I've added them to the garden here. And so we've put some Coreopsis in up here, back here and around the front too. And so. I'm excited to have some natives growing back here in what I want to be a native garden, though a lot of those yellow flowers are invasive. I can't seem to control them. The more I cut them, the more they grow. Let's go talk about what's going on in here. Since I have it on the handheld for a second, you can see what kind of a month I've had. You see my poor little tripod? I need to get another one because we had a banana incident. I also have footage of that too. I've just had to be okay with myself and accept the fact that I can't do everything everywhere all the time for all the parts of the garden, work a full-time job, help take care of my family, give myself a little mental health too. So I have to allow myself to know what things can just be let go and eventually I'll get another tripod. I'm aggravated because I have a second tripod but I can't find the attachment. So I didn't want to buy a new one because I have one. So, I don't know. Do you guys have these kinds of problems as gardeners? Maybe because you're, if you're not a YouTuber, you don't. I bet the other YouTubers have these things happen too. You get excited and you take parts apart and then you go do something. But you do it with your garden stuff, I'm sure. Right? It's not just me, is it? Is it? Now we have a Vigo bed, a birdie's bed, a Vigo bed, and a birdie's bed. 
These first two beds I bought myself. The other two have been provided by the respective company for some additional videos that I am working on. I have some updated videos on assembly, things that I learned, ways to grow in them that I didn't have last time. I'm also sticking with this angle because I want you to see how much weeds I have around the base of the bed, even though there's landscape fabric. The mistake I made when I put these beds in is that I did not put the landscape fabric down first, these first two beds. I in, Instead, I, I tried to pull out the dirt and tuck in the fabric. And in doing so, I made a place for dirt and debris to sort of make a home above the landscape fabric but at the edge of the bed and so because I'm not regularly weeding out here right now this is what's happened now I'm on a slope and so it may not be the same for you and we'll go look at the other beds how I'm going to do those but check this out on the other side if you forgot to put your landscape fabric down and you still want to do it and granted the other side is the really sunny side this is not the sunny side but on this side I simply just lapped up the landscape fabric And I don't have the weeds coming up on the side like I do over there. So, something to think about. I had planned to dig out both the Birdie's bed and the Vigo bed and show you all what it's like on the inside after one year. Before I could get to that bed, before I could get to this bed, this tomatilla plant started growing. This is a single plant and I did not have the heart to tear out this bed and waste all this beautiful food that was coming on. It happened so quickly, it got big so quickly. So that will have to wait until after this plant has petered out for the season. But I'm gonna have me some great salsa there day and I can't wait. Ah, the avocado tree. We did not take great care of that over the winter. I won't make that mistake again. We do have a few avocados on here but apparently today we have one less. I don't know where this one was growing. I didn't think we had any that were down low, but the raccoon does not mind climbing this tree and pulling them down. So that means today I have got to get the uh, something over these branches so they can't do that. Last year I used individual tool bags on these <laughs> and they just took the whole thing and so this year I'm gonna have to do something a little bigger I might put a bigger tool bag so I'm covering the entire branch or something like that but I'm gonna talk to the business today and we're gonna figure that out because we only have six or seven avocados on here and I don't want them all to go to the raccoons there is something happening on my mint here and I saw it on the horse mint up at the front and there's something foamy on there. I don't know what that is. If you guys know, I would appreciate that down in the comments. I will be looking it up too, but I just noticed that just now as I'm walking by. This mint is mint I can't use because of the soil it's growing in, but mom made a great suggestion. I am gonna let it go to seed. I am gonna trim some of it back and I'm gonna take it out and just let it grow out in the meadow, particularly around the top of the bank to help give me more root system to help with the bank out there. Up on the patio, we have a moringa in a pot. We have a Japanese maple. We have a underloved green stalk, but I do see that some volunteer cilantro is coming back. And from the kitchen, we had some onions to be used this week. And I saved the bottoms of them and left them in a cup let them grow out a little bit and I came and put them out here as well and watered them in. I do this a lot with onions. In fact, I have a whole pack in there I want to do it with. It's a great way, especially if you have a pack of onions that's about to go bad. Just chop them up. Save yourself like the bottom one inch of it. Put that in some water, just the very bottom of it. It'll grow some roots and then you can put that in the garden and you can keep cutting the tops off for a long time and then when you're ready you can just pluck it and use it again. It's kind of cool how that works. This dragon fruit got hit pretty hard by the frost um, but we are starting to see some new growth coming on now I'll show you the other one in just a minute that really is popping off I've been trying to figure out what was eating it and lo and behold I think I now know I think it's the snails 
I think the snails are eating this. I hadn't caught one in the in the act yet, but I think that's what's happening here. We have some other house plants. We have some baby dragon fruit there. I have um, pricked out that original plant. If y'all saw that in another video, this is what's left, and I have 16 more plants. I'll show you in just a second. I told you I didn't tidy up for guests coming, so forgive me. Over here we've got sweet potato starts. We've got uh, tomatoes I cut back and put in to get roots. I even have tomato here that's just growing in water. It's already put on tomatoes. I've already harvested tomatoes from this. It's just sitting here in a bucket. Just proof that they just want to grow if you'll give them just enough. It's time to top that water off. I do that usually every morning. I haven't done my watering this morning because I was doing a garden tour. And hi moose. You want to say hello to everybody? Yeah, what do you want to talk about? Do you want to talk about the living conditions here in the meadow? Are you fed enough? Huh? Do you, are you fed enough? Do you want more food? Always, always. I don't know, he didn't really like having his back touched, I don't think, but I do it gently, do it gently. Some more imperfection. I picked spinach yesterday. And then walked inside and forgot about it and left it out here. So now it's wilted. So I'm just going to let it turn brown so I can use it as part of my browns for the sub pod. Up here, check this out. It's my little baby nursery. We have baby dragon fruit. We got a small plant at Valentine's and it had like, I don't know, 50 or more dragon fruit plants in it and so I'm just gonna see if any of them will grow up and do something cool and we also have some Asian wing beans starting here I'm trying to abuse mint one more time mom picked this for me and let me get it from her garden and I did not get it put into dirt fast enough and I think I have messed that up again so <sighs> I am NOT always very good at this just in case you hadn't noticed we have some tomatoes that were stunted that are still feeling pretty stunted. I just harvested a bunch of Kung Pao uh, peppers off of here. Um, they are a little bit spicy. My nephew doesn't seem to think so. He just grabbed one off the plant and ate the whole thing before I could tell him to stop. So he didn't think it was spicy at all. He then ate a second one uh, to have an iron stomach. My butcher box planter is going okay. It's not looking great, but this was a really stunted plant when I put it in here. It had been in the cup way, 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 way too long. Probably probably six or eight weeks too long. So it may not do anything, and it may not be because of the box, but we're going to give it some more fertilizer today. This, though, check this out. I'm going to try to come up slowly and dramatically. Cue the dramatic lift. This dragon fruit is going off now and they told me that once it reached the top you stop cutting it back and so now I guess we're in the phase if you know better tell me in the comments we're in the phase where we start letting it just spill over oh I didn't see this one here we need to come and cut that one back but we just got to let it spill over and start doing its thing we have more mint here this is mint that we can eat another one of those stunted tomatoes and basil, when we go to the, the uh, pho restaurant, Vietnamese restaurant, we just take the basil home from the table and I stick it in here. And it has come back even after freezing, which is great because this is the one that my wife likes. All the other ones I try to grow, she hates. And so this summer, in fact, I'm hoping to do a summer of basil challenge really got to get that video up and I got to get the other basil started so I want to plant as many different varieties of basil as I can find grow them up so she can have a little taste test and decide if any of those that we get from seed match or meet the taste and style and quality of the ones we get from the Vietnamese restaurant because that's the one she likes to cook with and every time I grow basil she keeps telling me this is not the right one so maybe this summer will be the summer I figure out what the right basil is and here I have sweet potato starts and some yam starts. I took vines off of the plants I showed y'all earlier a few weeks ago. And what I want to do, I really want to try this idea of succession planting. Go ahead and harvest some of those and transplant these vines down in there. We'll go back down the north side of the garden. Here we have some moringa that's growing. It's looking pretty good. I probably need to harvest some of that. I see the leaves are starting to yellow. We had a whole lot of rain in one week, like four or five inches of rain in a single week. And then nothing. 
So there's always this balance I'm trying to figure out. Over here is the stun bed, but now it's kind of hard to tell the stun bed from the weeds <laughs> that are growing around it. But I do have a new tool I'm going to try and hopefully at some point make another video with this tool. Here's another one of those Catali Guava. It doesn't have fruit yet. It also froze back, so all of this is new growth. And whatever this is growing, I thought it looked like a raspberry or a blackberry or something. And so I have left it growing. I could use one of those apps and take a look. If you have any idea, let me know. But I'm going to let it grow for a little bit more and see what we get. And if it ends up being something I don't want, I'll just cut it out. Over here we have the volunteer sweet potatoes. It's almost time to harvest those again. And eventually I have another bed that will go in here. So we'll see how that's going to go. I have been trying to pull the beans out as I see them. I see some more that have been volunteer beans in here because I don't want to cross pollinate the Asian wing beans that are up front. The fig is fascinating. I just can't get over how beautiful it looks. And it also gives me a little privacy from the street, which is kind of nice. Over here is a forever garden bed. This is one that was also provided to me. Um, I, am plant I have planted potatoes in here. They're fairly newly planted. And so as I see things starting to grow up out of the bed, I think that is a knot. I think these are from Dollar Weed. As I see things starting to grow up, I'll start hilling them up and then adding some straw and other things on here. And for those who wonder why I might have this mesh over the top, it is to keep the cats from using this as a giant litter box. Over on the other side is my stun okra. Stun means simple, total, utter neglect. I threw these seeds in the ground and now I'm getting okra. I'm not taking care of them. I'm not watering them. I mean, they may get some water when I water the other things, but I'm not intentionally doing anything to take care of them. And I've already harvested some okra and I see some more out there that needs to be harvested. Up here in the front fruit guild, the fruit tree guild, more figs. We have some plums that are gonna need some trimming. The peach tree definitely is gonna get a trim. I want to do some air pruning where I wrap soil around a branch and turn it into another tree. Big thanks to the person who commented, I think his name was Sam, talking about how to trim back the growth on these trees and talking about the grafting point. One of the interesting things he reminded me is that it's probably a good reason why they've grafted this onto a different rootstock. So I can take some of this growth that's above the graft and I can clone the plant that's above the graft. However, it's possible, while it will be the identical fruit, that the rootstock may not take very well and I may not get good results, but I'm willing to take that chance. This is my current pride right now. I love having this Vigo garden up in the front. It looks really cute. It's still early, so the purslane hasn't bloomed yet, but here's what's got me so excited. This is where we had Asian wing beans last year. I dug the tubers up out of the ground. I did a video about that. And here, we're starting to see some growth. There's growth there. This is the only one whose vine didn't die, but I see new growth down there. And I saw new growth in one other spot. So, I am very hopeful. Plus, I've planted more seeds, so if that does not work out, it will all be all right. And, <laughs> actually, I see a new... Asian wing bean right there. I may dig that up and just put it right into the bed just for fun. Actually, two of them. Last year, I planted sweet potatoes out here. Clearly, I did not get them all. I've got some vines coming up there and some vines coming up over there. And even all the way back here, which is funny because that's under the ground. This is coming up from under the ground. There's no above ground connection here. It did not grow out this far on top of the ground last year when I harvested them. So, they will roll. Look how big this salvia is. I bet it's more than six feet apart now. The funny thing about this, I planted it in this corner originally. And it keeps dying back and falling over and rerooting. And so it's slowly walking across my garden. 
it's kind of funny it leaves this bare spot up front but it's nice it gives me a place to walk around I've got a place for this cute little sign and I don't know if y'all can see how much activity is up there let's see if I can get in close I'm trying to count I see at least six or seven bees right now just enjoying this and being a part of the garden so it makes me very happy oh there's one right there hi welcome 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 my friend then up here at the front of the house we have this big pollinator garden we've got milkweed we've got zinnia that's coming back i tried to make a pumpkin patch up here it's still trying but that just did not work out it's not very pretty it's not something i want up front i did get one pumpkin and it did not make it it's really hollow so i've just left it here for now i need to move it but i thought it was at least some color in that bare spot and i transplanted more of the coreopsis up here as well We've got Coryopsis, we've got Gallardia, I think is how you say it. We've got this bee balm or horse mint, which I will be removing after the season. It just looks too unwieldy up here. It does not make my beloved happy, and so I want her to be happy. And so those will be coming out after this season. And I'll plant something else. <laughs> I say they're going to be coming out, but they're everywhere. They're everywhere. So this may be several years of, of cleaning them up and getting rid of them and moving them to a better place in the yard. But now I want to show you something really special. My nephew was here last weekend working off a little bit that he owed me and he helped me create this. I do have a little DIY video talking about how we made this, but these are upcycled shipping containers that my wife brought home from work but he drilled out the holes he trimmed them up he painted them up and then we attached them around the mailbox the mailbox needed something to make it a little sturdier i've wanted something a little prettier and this is the purse lane here or partulaca it is edible though i'm not sure with the dogs that may come by and water it for me whether i would eat out of this but still going to be really neat and these will be a little open Later today, I see a lot of new flowers coming on. They're pretty happy in their new home. Uh, it is a succulent. It can take the heat, though upon first transplant needs a little bit of extra water, particularly in the hot heat, like any kind of a plant would. A few weeks ago, someone was throwing away these retaining wall stones, so we brought them home. I do need to dig that in a little better. I don't like how it's sloped, um, but for now, it gives a nice little base around the bottom of the tabby bua tree. And then of course, we're kind of wrapping up here, coming to the last side. We have the lemongrass here, which has already grown inches and inches since I trimmed it. One more view of the lovely bananas. My friends, that is all the imperfection I could put into a single garden tour. If you like this content, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to know more about all the imperfection we have growing on here in our Zone 9A Northeast Florida Garden. Until next time, my friends, remember to drink plenty of water, wear that high quality sunscreen, and as always, have a fantastic day. me ma'am ah do you have a permit to be in this garden bed ma'am I need to see your permit please <laughs>